Does anyone know when the original soundtrack released? I really want to get my hands on it. The war, that's right, war, rages on with one demon who could take on any challenger. Sonami was doing well until he took the bad hit. Luckily, he holds Marachi to slow him down. Normally in Shonen, this would be considered as a power up and or a moment for the good guys to rise up. The series does not follow that trend precisely. This chapter wasn't action packed like the previous chapters, but the intensity remains strong and offer a better look to the man who was once my disliked character. After admiring a stellar color page of Kokushibo in his greatness, including his sword, the chapter begins with Asanami's backstory, his point of view after the tragedy of his family. Sometimes a flashback would mean a character would likely die. Sonami has been on the radar since the last chapter, so this timing of execution didn't ease my fear. In fact, this whole chapter's ploy is to have the fans convinced that he is going to die. That's why I feel the tense feeling while reading it. We know Genya's side of the story, so the flashback briefly recalls the tragedy, only in Sanami's point of view. I like the fact it unveiled the moment he learned his blood is a Marachi, though it's eerie since it was his butter reactions that signify it. What a cruel way to discover it. That moment is when his life changed drastically. He became a demon slayer without knowing there's a faction. It's like he's Goblin Slayer, only hunts for demon for a living. I assume that means his scars are based on experience. I find his comparison to his lifestyle depressing, calling it a suicide attempt. That's just sad. That's probably why his mental state is portrayed as a lunatic. The new detail to his backstory is appealing, mainly due to the brotherhood relationship. His meeting with Masachika was like a ray of light to develop or recover humanity. Above all, look at the bright spot of the cruel world again. Sadly, only Sanami became a pillar and Masachika died working together. The narrative made me feel bad for him. As short as it was, their friendship hit me. Little did I know, there will be more to the story that makes the moment better. But more on that later. The action resume and is great as always. Shorter, yes. But the intensity is just as crazy, if not crazier. I like how Kokushibo remained observant, rather than scared or phased that he might die. He's more fascinated than anything, and that alone is terrifying. A demon with no doubts. With that said, I also like how he exploits Sonami as a slayer with intense experiences, including suppressing his bleeding with his own muscle or something. Sonami is a mad man, but that's his character in a nutshell. Appearance why at least, so that would give him a chance to win, right? If only. I was hyped for him to gain the advantage over Kokushibo. Normally, I would be like, oh, come on, this ass pool? Or simply watch for whatever to a battle that doesn't interest me. Here, I'm definitely consumed. I wouldn't mind if he wins there. It looked like he was gaining momentum, but Kokushibo shocks the world by stomping his sword to the ground. Where's an ass pool when you need one? I got bone chills at the very moment. Kokushibo swings his sword to decapitate Sanami. Irony and cruel. The worst part is, it goes to another flashback, teasing the fans badly whether he will die or not. Not cool, Gator. Not cool. This flashback is surprisingly emotional. Ever since the recent volume cover, I really miss Oboyashiki. Sanami wasn't favored to work under him, since he thought a leader does nothing but smile as their pawns suffer outside. It was his first gathering, and much like some fans, myself included, his first impression was pretty rough. Gyome looked ready to beat the hell out of him for disrespecting. 
Sanami press on further to insult Ubuyashiki, like he's a piece of garbage. The irony is, it's the other way around. The purity of Ubuyashiki is unmatched. Only Tanjo can match. Maybe. His sorry expression truly reflects his warm, kind-hearted nature. It's the face no one can hate. It's sad to know that he will absolutely love to fight for his people, but his sickness prevented him. He can only wait and hope. It speaks great volume on his purity. Wasanami remember his mother in their blessing moment. That explains why he cried when Ubuyashiki died. Damn, that hits me again. While well, it was said before, it's the present how Ubuyashiki sees everyone replaceable himself included. Sure, it means everyone is in the same level of importance, but the fact the course must go on shows the magnitude on the commitment until the demons are gone. He was not only sorry that he can't fight with the pillars, but also sorry for calling Sanami after losing his close friend, Masachika. How could anyone hate him? Kanai was there at the time, which I would love to see a guidance based on her to inform one interesting fact. Their master remembered everyone, from their names to background. He deeply cared for them. <sighs> I'm not crying. The best part is the wills of the fallen pillars. By this point, Sanami felt like a real idiot for hating. However, Ubuyashiki isn't there to make him so, but instead lead him to the righteous path. I was touched by Sanami's friendship with Masachika earlier, but this next part really moved me. Is revealed Masachika was similar to him. They both have a younger brother. Their bond was practically brotherhood. Although he's gone, he wished for a shiny future want their loved ones to smile. The words deeply hit Sanami in the field so much, he began to cry. The flashback was really good. It's amazing how the series continued to make Ubuyashiki as a man. The world needed it and deserved. Even after his death, it enlightened Sanami as a man who had no real direction until that moment in the gathering. It gave him the ray of light that he had forgotten, including Genya. He's not gone, so it's not over. He has a chance to make a difference. Sonami earned my respect from this. Now, I really, really hope he doesn't die. The next couple of pages are an adrenaline rush to the core. I had a huge sign of relief with Sonami's defense with the gun. I was so damn certain that he would actually hurt Kokushibo, but he still blocks it. Seriously, that's just not fair. He then unleashed Moon Chain, but Sonami is gone from the area. Who appears instead? Gyome. Finally! The flashback made the moment better since we last saw him pissed off at Sonami. Now, he rescue him. Time truly heal wounds. The hype is incredible. You have four slayers in the field now, though most of them are injured. Perhaps in time, they will work together. If it does happen, it will be outstanding. This was a great chapter to showcase Sonami as a respectable man. Ubuyashke was always pure. But this chapter truly made him the second coming of the savior. The flashback was delightful, the artwork was gentle, the intensity was insane, the cliffhanger left me very hyped for the next. Kogoshibo has yet to get hit, which does make him incredibly strong. But maybe, just maybe, Gyome can finally put a scratch. And that will do it for the review. I hope you enjoyed this one. It's truly amazing how much the death flag keeps swamping places. First, it was Tokito, then Genya, then Sanami, now Gyome? Who is really going to die? I want nobody to die, but you never know. And there's a holiday break coming soon, so maybe the next chapter will be epic. What do you think of this chapter? Share your thoughts in the comment section. If you like this and want more of this, 
subscribe to my channel, and my world will be yours to stay. Until next time, take care.